66 million years ago, a giant asteroid struck Earth, wiping out the dinosaurs and 75% of the other animals on Earth. Devastating, yeah, but this was millions of years ago. What if this asteroid were to collide with us today? Is there any chance we could stop it? What parts of the world would be most impacted? And why might this end up being a good thing? This is What If, and here's what would happen if the dinosaur-killing asteroid struck in 2024. Okay, let's see what kind of asteroid we're dealing with here. Known as the Chicxulub Impactor, this asteroid was as wide as 100 to 200 football fields. That's 10 to 20 kilometers wide. And now, it's coming directly toward us specifically the Yucatan Peninsula in Mexico. If you think you can run away from this thing, yeah, no chance. It's hurtling toward Earth at 20 kilometers per second. Suddenly, it crashes into the sea, killing everything in the immediate vicinity. But that's not all. A thermal pulse radiates out from the blast site, releasing the energy equivalent of 10 billion nuclear bombs an enormous shockwave of air that destroys everything within 1,500 kilometers. Plants and animals are shredded, forests burn to the ground. A magnitude 10 earthquake would crack the earth open. Quakes would radiate throughout the United States. Massive tsunamis would rise. Mexico City, Florida and Texas would all feel the effects. I know Texas has talked about seceding, but I don't think this is what they had in mind. Now, although there will still be life on Earth, it might not last much longer. Plumes of dust and sulfur in the atmosphere block the sun. For the next 15 years, it's a cold, dark, awful winter. Only a few of us will make it out alive. But maybe the humans that do survive will be able to rebuild Earth. And funny enough, that massive asteroid that caused all the damage? Well, it might hold the key to a stable new future. If you want to see what I mean, let's head to the impact site. Some of the most valuable materials known to humans are scattered within this massive crater of destruction. This asteroid, like many others, contained one of the most essential elements for rebuilding our society. Gold. Now, when most people think of gold, they think of it as a symbol of luxury and high status, but they don't understand why it's considered to be so valuable. Well, for starters, it's a key component we can use to rebuild our communications technology, energy infrastructure, and medical equipment. But more importantly, if traditional currency systems collapse after this disaster, it would help stabilize the global economy. Gold has been valued as a stable medium of exchange and store of value for millennia, especially during difficult times. Even in today's volatile market environment, gold remains one of the safest investments. With a one-year return of 8.68% and a five-year return of 54.95%, gold continues to show its resilience and capacity to protect investments against inflation, currency devaluation, and geopolitical risks. According to experts at Caliber Mining, a public company that produces gold listed in Canada on the TSX and in the US on the OTCQX, gold production remains underinvested despite its value. Let me explain. Caliber Mining leverages the stability of gold with the added potential of a high growth company. They've proven value through delivering 28% year over year production growth and even a tenfold increase in their reserves since 2019. With five mines across the globe and the ability to self-fund exploration, well, Caliber is constantly drilling and finding more gold. They continue to grow and diversify their gold production with their new Canadian asset, Valentine, gearing up to come online next year. Now, despite that success, gold and gold production is a sector not getting much attention yet. But the price continues to rise and well-known banks like Goldman Sachs predict higher prices. So, you can see why having this giant deposit of gold in front of us is one of the most useful things we could ask for when rebuilding our society. And mining from it will continue to provide value and wealth for future generations. But for any of that to happen, 
We need to survive the asteroid in the first place. And luckily for us, it's not 66 million years ago. It's 2024 and we're homo sapiens, creatures with really big brains and bright ideas. No offense to the T-Rex, but they definitely weren't getting Wordle in two and they definitely weren't tracking the sky for asteroids. But there's a team at NASA doing just that. And if we were able to spot an asteroid ahead of time, could we somehow steer it off course? Well, it's possible to deflect an asteroid from its path. Here's five different options we can explore. The first possibility is a kinetic impactor. This is the only deflection option scientists have tested so far. The idea behind it is to violently slam an object into the asteroid, pushing it off its path. NASA tested this technique in 2022 by slamming a spacecraft into Dimorphos. Dimorphos is the moon of a near-Earth asteroid, and thanks to the force of the collision, it's now going faster. So, in theory, we could use this option to move an asteroid off course. But there's a bit of a problem. The asteroid we're dealing with is way too big. In order to successfully knock it off course, we'd need multiple kinetic impactors. I'm not liking our chances with this one. Let's see what else we got. Okay, the second option for deflection is called a gravity tractor. Think of this like your dog pulling on its leash, taking you down a different path to smell something interesting. Minus the dog and the smell. Here, a spacecraft flies next to an asteroid, changing its path by the force of its gravity. Unfortunately, there's a big problem with this method. Well, for starters, it takes a really long time, and again, it only works on small asteroids ones that are less than 500 meters in diameter. Yeah, this will be a no-go when it comes to the massive asteroid heading toward Earth. Okay, the third option is something known as an ion beam shepherd. But instead of herding goats, this shepherd is a spacecraft herding the asteroid out of our way. The spacecraft has an ion engine which generates an exhaust of accelerated xenon ions. These ions are super powerful charged particles, and the force of these charged particles deflects the asteroid, but probably not powerful enough to deflect a Chicxulub repeat. Okay, next up, space lasers. Now, if you're imagining zapping the entire asteroid with lasers so it vaporizes, no, that's not it. Unfortunately, it isn't as cool, but it can be effective. The laser is trained on the surface, creating plumes that push the asteroid away. And if we had enough lasers that were powerful enough, this might be a viable method. Finally, for a really big asteroid like the one we're dealing with here, and something's got to be done, there's always nukes. Now, this would be incredibly dangerous because there's always the possibility of fragments of the asteroid or other space debris falling on Earth. Not to mention launching nukes in general is a super risky endeavor, but let's be real. An emergency like this probably justifies us unlocking the nuclear codes. Scientists tell us that sending a nuke that detonates next to an asteroid two months ahead of time could vaporize 99.9% .9 of the asteroid's mass away from Earth. Sounds pretty good to me. Now, all of this only works if we spot the asteroid way ahead of time. If for some reason we don't, and an asteroid suddenly came out of nowhere, we'd have a mass evacuation. The evacuation zone would be determined based on the size, speed, and angle of the impending impact. Since it's hitting the Yucatan Peninsula, well, the US, Cuban, and Mexican governments would be busy evacuating people in Mexico, Cuba, and parts of the southern United States. The three governments would have to create alternative arrangements for food and shelter for hundreds of thousands of people, maybe more. Now, mass evacuation doesn't sound like a walk in the park, so is there any upside to having an asteroid land in our backyard? Well, yeah, there are amazing gifts the asteroid could bring us. A whole host of valuable minerals. Due to their highly inconvenient locations in deep space, like in the asteroid belt, these space rocks are extremely difficult to mine. But this would change if an asteroid landed on Earth. Just a single asteroid is estimated to contain a ridiculous amount of gold. 
700 quintillion. That's enough zeros to give every person on Earth $93 billion. And there are other elements that we might be able to extract as well. Cobalt, platinum, nickel. In fact, the pressure with which the asteroid crashes can transform one element into a more valuable one. For instance, at a meteorite crash site in Australia, a rare mineral, rheodite, was found. It was formed out of zircon as a result of the high pressure and temperature of the impact. And, you know, mining these elements from asteroids could free us from the human rights issues that have been part and parcel of traditional mining. Caliber mining follows ethical mining practices, but not every mining company does. In addition, mining asteroids would be more environmentally friendly, free of the danger of releasing toxins like lead and arsenic into our water. Today, large impact craters in South Africa and Canada are already being mined. They're rich sources of nickel and gold. The devastation from the crash of an asteroid would be horrific, but if it turns out it's unavoidable, that devastation may hold the clue to new resources and new growth. But this is what would happen if the Chicxulub asteroid hit Earth. Now, what would happen if an asteroid hit the moon and cracked it in half? Well, that sounds like a story for another What If.